Hey everybody, this is Mrs. Kalanicki. Sorry I'm out today, another workshop, but I'm gonna bring back lots of cool ideas for you. Okay, let's get started real quick. We're going to do a quick review of what we learned yesterday, which is multiplying and dividing rational numbers. And then you're gonna take a quick quiz. If you need more time, uh, write your academic sports teacher's name on the upper right corner and we will send it there and you guys can finish it today. All right, you should have handed in your reflection sheet from last night. I am checking right now on my phone that you did your homework, so hopefully you did it on time. Remember, all homework and the test is going to be on Thursday, so make sure all your homework is due and done by Thursday. All right, here we go. So we're gonna be reviewing rational numbers, multiplying and dividing. You need to be able to re rewrite division problems with fractions, solve multiplying and dividing word problems, and solve multiplying and division, uh, multiplication and division problems with rational numbers. All right, let's start, with, let's start with this first one up here. So I have to rewrite this division problem as a multiplication problem. So right now it doesn't even look like a division problem. But if you notice, there's a very dark uh, fraction bar right here, and this top one's a little bit skinnier. So this is saying one-third... Ooh, my handwriting's getting worse on this. Let's try this again. One-third... Let me try that one more time. It's going to be one-third, no, that three is just terrible, divided by five. And now I want to rewrite that as a multiplication problem. Now, we did this yesterday. This is the same as subtraction. We leave, we change, and we use the multiplicative inverse. So leave one-third alone, change multiplica uh, division to multiplication, and I have to change, take the inverse, and a lot of you said the word flip yesterday. Before I flip it, how do I write five as just a fraction by itself? Another way to write five is just five over one. So if I'm gonna flip that, that's going to become one over five. And that's it, I don't really want you to do anything else, just rewrite it, so this would be your final answer for that problem. Number two, very similar question, except this time the fractions um, are mixed numbers. So we did a little bit of this practice yesterday, changing a mixed number into an improper fraction. So changing it so that it looks like a fraction. It doesn't have the whole number anymore. So two steps. We multiply the denominator by the whole number. Three times one is three. And we add our numerator. So three times one is three, plus one makes four. And I'm gonna keep that over my original denominator of three. Sorry, my threes are not very good today. Yikes, that one's terrible. Let's try that again. Boo, boo, boo. All right, while I'm erasing, you try the next one. How do I change two and one third into an improper fraction? If you want, pause the video. So give everybody a second just to try that one out. I'm going to leave it as a division problem right now, but I want you to rewrite this as an improper fraction. Here's my first step. 3 and 2. Pause the video if you need, otherwise I'm going to start going over it. Okay, 3 times 2 is 6. 1 more makes 7. So this will be 7 over the original denominator of 3. Now that it looks like a nice division problem, I'm going to rewrite it as a multiplication problem. Leave, change, inverse. You change inverse. So leaving four thirds alone, changing division to multiplication, and taking the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal of seven thirds, which is three sevenths. And that would be my multiplication problem. Again, pause the video at any time if you need a second. The next four questions are all calculator questions. One, two, three, four. So I want you to do those on your calculator. Pause the video, come right back. Again, do them twice. I'm gonna ask you to read, double check them on your quiz as well. Don't get silly points off because you're not double checking your calculations. So pause the video, come back, and I'm gonna go over these four questions. Three, four, five, and six. Okay. Pause the video and you're back. That means you're ready to go over these. I'm going to read the answers out. I'm going to write them down um, on the worksheet as we go. So 7 and 79 hundredths times 8. That's a time sign. 
a little dot. Remember, we can use a dot, we can use an X, or we can use parentheses to show multiplying. Final answer is 62 and 32 hundredths. Okay. Number four, three and one half times three fifths. Multiply and you get two and one tenth. Again, these should be no problem for you. You guys are very well doing very well on your calculator. I'm going to write this one out just because this is not how I would put it in my calculator. Uh, you notice the big fraction bar is up here. So that is five divided by three sevenths. And again, if I put that, that in my calculator, I'm going to get 11 and two thirds. So if you're getting all these right, that means you're a really good, careful typer on your, ca on your calculator. And if you're not getting these right, your brain's gonna grow in the next couple minutes, and hopefully you will get these right on your quiz. This is a division problem also, 30 and 574 thousandths divided by seven. Remember, this number goes in your calculator first, divided by seven. And you should get four and 368 thousandths. Thousands. All right, the final two questions I'm going to talk you through. We did a lot with clue words yesterday, so I want to focus on that today. A truck driver drove 315 miles in five and one half hours. What was the average speed in miles per hour? So we talked about this word yesterday, but this word usually is two steps. It usually means add up the numbers and then divide by how many there are. Um, but this phrase, the word per, which kind of is like each, so that's a little tricky, but it says miles per hour, it has a whole phrase here. This phrase is very helpful because it's helpful in organizing your numbers. We're going to use average the way we used it yesterday to mean dividing. The word per and the phrase miles per hour are going to give me the clue as to what order I need to put the numbers in my calculator. So I'm going to do miles on top, and then I'm going to do hours on the bottom. So this is how I read. When I see the word miles per hour, I think of this. Miles on top, 315, and hours on the bottom, 5 and 1 4. And this is going to be a nice division problem for me. So I'm putting, taking my calculator, 315, divided by five, ABC one, ABC four. Hopefully you're doing it with me. And our label is going to be speed. And the speed is going to be how fast I'm driving in miles per hour. So you should have a pretty good idea of what a truck driver might be driving. If he's driving 200 miles an hour, you probably did something wrong. If he's driving six miles an hour, you probably did something wrong also. This answer should be, anybody get it? Yeah, okay, final answer should be 60. Ugh, that's a terrible six, sorry guys. I don't know, my computer's just not doing well today with these, uh, this writing. 60, ugh, miles per hour. We write MPH, MPH, 60 miles per hour. Miles per hour. You've probably seen that on your car. If you look at the steering wheel, where the steering wheel is, it says how fast people are going, miles per hour. And the last word problem, and again, right into the quiz right after this. So number eight, what is the area of a room that measures 10 and 3 fourths feet for the length and 8 and 1 half feet for the width? We talked about this clue word yesterday. It's not width, it's not length, it's not feet, it's area. And again, as soon as you hear area, you should have that formula in your head. It's a two-dimensional shape. It's a rectangle, right? A rectangular room or a square room. This is a rectangular room because the length and width are different. Area is length times width. So in my calculator, I'm gonna do 10 and 3 fourths. I'm trying to write really careful so you can see it. At times eight and one half. All right, a lot of the ABC button gonna happen in here. I'm doing it with you, so I hope you do it with me. 10, ABC three, ABC four, three, 10, three fourths, times eight, ABC one, ABC 12. Final answer. Hmm, I got a different answer this last time. Let's see, I'm gonna do it one more time. 
because I did write down the answer that I had. Um, oh, that's why. Ah, I made a typo. That's why my answer is different. Did you catch it? This should be not one twelfth. It should be one half. I don't know if I said one half and I wrote one twelfth. All right, now I can put it in my calculator. Ten and three fourths times eight and one half. Oh, good. This is the answer I got before. Okay. So now I know I did it right. If I got the answer twice, and on your quiz too, same thing, make sure you're getting the same answer twice. If you are, then you probably did it right and you're all set. If not, then you got to do it one more time and break the tie. Final answer is 91 and 3 fourths. And when we talked about area yesterday, it's feet, because that's how they're measuring it. But it's feet squared. And again, look at the ceiling, look at the floor. It's covered in squares. When we cover an area, we can cover it in square feet or square inches. So that's why this is going to say feet squared with a little two exponent. Okay, so it's time for quiz time. Please leave this uh, PowerPoint up on the board because I want to give you some reminders. For number one and number two, you're going to rewrite the problem and you're going to solve and give me the answer. For numbers three through six, just like we did now, make sure you double check them in your calculator. Don't get silly. Don't make silly mistakes just because you type something wrong in your calculator. And for number seven and eight, just like our word problems here, I want you to show your work and I want you to circle your final answer. So I want to see what operation you're doing. Here I can see I did dividing. Here I can see I did multiplying. So again, show your work and circle or box your final answer. Good luck to everyone. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye. Bye.